And joining us now are infectious disease specialists, Dr. Lenora Saxinger in Edmonton and Dr. Susie Hoda in Toronto. And Dr. Saxinger, let, let's start with you. From your perspective in Alberta, how would you describe the state of the pandemic right now? I think that we're in a really difficult situation. Things feel like we're walking on a knife edge, really. Um, we're already seeing problems with hospital capacity in some key areas, and our case numbers don't appear to be turning in the right direction at all. There have been sustained close to 1,000 cases a day. So even if we were able to basically stop transmission magically tomorrow, we're still going to have problems with, with providing health care in all the areas that we need to. So uh, a lot of us are feeling very nervous and very anxious about how things are going. And, and Dr. Hoda, the perspective from Southern Ontario? It's a very similar situation here. I, I'm very worried by the trend that we're seeing with the number of cases that are rising every day in Ontario. And certainly hospitalizations are going up. And if we continue in this trend, in spite of what restrictions we have here, I'm very worried that our health care system is going to be overwhelmed. You know, here in BC, we're getting some clear direction from our medical health officers to, to really clamp down on social interactions inside the house, outside the house. And I'm curious, and, and first, Dr. Hoda, to you, uh, is there any way in your day-to-day -day life that you're acting differently right now because of the, the point we're in? I think there are kind of two things. One, when I'm outside and I see a neighbor and I'm just saying hello, I'm really trying to keep my distance and be very mindful of how far away we are from each other. And then the other thing that's maybe more important is really no socializing outside of my household um, bubble. Uh, I think it's so important for us to be limiting our extra contacts. And so that's, that's an important decision we all have to make right now. And Dr. Saxinger? I have actually scaled back um, errands, going out to do things. I'm trying to do them all in one swoop. I'm limiting the amount of time I'm spending in you know, the shared airspace with other people while I'm doing that. And I also have basically just retreated to my bubble. I'm turtling in my house and uh, trying to have virtual contacts for the moment. So very much like what I was doing in, and what many of us were doing in April uh, and May of this year. Yeah, but it's interesting, right? If, if this is what infectious disease doctors are doing, I think that's instructive for the rest of us. Now, we've asked uh, our viewers for some questions, and uh, here's one for you, Dr. Saxinger. What uh, are the risks of babies uh, contracting COVID-19, and what symptoms should we be looking out for um, as an indication to seek medical attention? Right, so the risk for babies is actually amazingly, given that we consider them to be very, very vulnerable, very low for COVID-19, given that we've had over 45 million cases, well over 45 million cases, um, the number of severe outcomes in, in infants is extremely, extremely low. And it would present very much like any viral respiratory tract type infection. And if babies have prolonged fevers, so you have to take them to get checked out regardless. And so I think it doesn't really change what we do. If a baby has a fever, uh, um, is in respiratory distress, the baby needs to be checked out. And, uh, and really, it is actually less risky than I think most people realize. Uh, last week, Canadians were advised to use non-medical masks with three layers instead of two. And Dr. Hoda, here's a, a question from Calgary. What does the third layer actually do and how important is it to upgrade my mask? Well, really, when you think about what masks are here for, it's, um, you know, just to perform two functions. First of all, to be a barrier and to try and prevent any uh, respiratory droplets you have to, from getting out to other people. But it also may protect the individual wearer as well um, and filter out some of the particles that you would inhale. It's not as good when we're talking about non-medical masks, but there is a little bit of that function there. So having a third layer, an additional layer, is really just adding to both of those functions uh, a little bit. Um, I am not convinced that people have to run out and um, get rid of their old masks if there were two layers and uh, replace them all with three layer masks right away. I think that's something that we should aim towards as we're getting new masks. We have uh, less than a minute left, Dr. Saxinger. I'll, I'll ask each of you, but first to you, um, half a minute last words on this. I just really want to encourage people to look at the number of contacts that they have. We're really facing a difficult time. And at the end of the day, to get infected, you have to be in the company of another, inf another person who is unwittingly infected. So just limiting your contacts strictly will actually make a big difference. Dr. Hoda? I think very much along the same way. I think this is a time for us to um, really stay within our households, not be socializing with other people. I know it's tough and we're all tiring of these measures, but it's more important than ever to be holding, holding those measures in place. 
But when you think about it, given what you guys are saying, and as I say, it's the same message out here, it is something which is very much in our control. So maybe that's a little bit hopeful. Thanks to both of you. You're welcome. Thank you. And if you have questions about COVID-19, send them to us. You can message us directly on Instagram at CBC The National or send us an email at covid at cbc.ca.